Hi guys. So let's continue with straight lines again today. Moving on to the second part of the first portion. That is, we have already done the slope of a line. The two methods to define a slope. So we'll move ahead and start with the conditions for parallelism and perpendicularity of two lines in terms of slope. Okay. So let's start. Uh, firstly, we have parallelism of two lines. That is, if two lines are given to us, that is L and M here, with their respective slopes to be M1 and M2. Then, as the lines are parallel and a third line cutting or intersecting both the lines is known as a transversal, so these two angles here will be corresponding angles, so they have to be equal. So what is slope of line L here? It's M1 which is equal to tan of theta as done by method 1 and here M2 the slope of line M is also equal to tan theta. So by both of these equations we get M1 is equal to M2. This is the basic condition for any two parallel lines that is their slopes are always equal. Okay. So, similarly, we also have a condition for the perpendicularity of two lines. It's a little complex, but no worries if you understand the formula well. So, we'll start with it. Perpendicularity may, there's a Cartesian system given to us and two lines, L and M, which are perpendicular with the respective slopes, M1 and M2 are given. Now, if you can see the green triangle here, if we apply the exterior angle property in this triangle we get beta is equal to 90 degrees plus alpha okay so now what is the slope of line L that is M1 it is equal to tan of alpha tangent of alpha and similarly slope of M, uh, M2 that is line M is tan beta so now if we substitute the value of beta as shown here as uh, by 90 plus alpha we get m2 is equal to tan beta is equal to tan alpha plus 90 degrees. So now what is tan alpha plus 90 degrees as you must have done in trigonometry as this angle alpha plus 90 degrees is in the second quadrant it will become negative. And secondly, as it is 90 degrees and not 180 degrees, it will become cot. So we get M2 is equal to minus of cot alpha. Now multiplying M1 and M2 here, we get tan alpha into minus 1 by tan alpha because cot alpha is 1 by tan alpha. Cutting, we get M1 into M2 is minus 1. So don't worry, you don't need to do the derivation, but you must know it so that you can derive the formula anytime if you forget it. But simply remember the formula m1 into m2 is equal to minus of 1. This will help you solve many questions. Moving on, what is the third and the most important part of this portion? It is angle between two lines. How to find the, an angle between two lines by using the slope of the two given lines. So here we have two lines with an angle of theta degree between them. This is the acute angle between them and the obtuse angle between them is 5 degrees. So if the slope of M1 is tan alpha and the slope of M2 is tan beta because of the respective angles they make with positive direction of x axis, what we get is a triangle ABC applying the same thing exterior angle property in this triangle we get alpha plus theta is equal to beta so as theta here is the unknown we get theta is equal to beta minus alpha now as seen above we know that theta plus phi is equal to 180 degrees from the linear pair so if we find one of them, the other will automatically come. So finding the acute angle is 
easier so we'll go by it so tan of theta substituting the value of theta from here we get tan of beta minus alpha so applying the identity here we get tan of a minus b is equal to tan a minus tan b upon 1 plus tan a into tan b this is the identity you must have seen in trigonometry so applying it we get tan beta minus tan alpha upon 1 plus tan alpha into tan beta now substituting the values of m1 is equal to tan alpha and m2 is equal to tan beta in these that is from here substituting these values into this formula here what we get is the next formula written here that is tan theta is equal to m2 minus m1 upon 1 plus m1 into m2 so now we see for angle phi angle phi is 180 degrees minus theta so tan phi will be tan of 180 degrees minus theta so it is equal to minus of tan theta because the angle is 180 degrees so it must remain tan and because it is in the second quadrant it becomes negative because tan and cot are negative in the second quadrant so this means tan of phi is equal to m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2 which is the opposite of tan of theta so instead of applying both the results we can simply cut it short and use this formula given here that tan of theta is equal to modulus of m2 minus m1 upon 1 plus m1 into m2 now by modulus we mean that this value will always be positive irrespective of whether m2 is greater or m1 so tan theta will always be positive hence theta will always be acute so we we'll always use this formula to find the acute angle between the two lines and then use that angle again to find the obtuse angle if mentioned in the question but the condition here remains that 1 plus m1 into m2 that is the denominator of this expression should not be equal to 0 because if it is 0 then the whole equation or tan theta becomes undefined okay so we will see an example for this if angle between two lines is pi by 4 and slope of two line of, of the lines if angle between two lines is pi by 4 and slope of one of the lines is half find the slope of the other line so what we will do here is first we will make the coordinate system then we will make the two lines supposing the angle here is given to be this is the acute angle which is given to be pi by 4 so theta here is pi by 4 radians it is another unit to measure angles so to convert it into degrees it's very simple many of you must be knowing it it's 180 degrees upon 180 upon 4 degrees so what we get from here it is 45 degrees solving this question we apply the formula tan theta is equal to m2 minus m1 upon 1 plus m1 m2 whole modulus let's take the slope of one of the lines that is m1 to be half and m2 to be unknown so we'll solve this question putting the values in this equation we get tan of 45 degrees is equal to modulus of m2 which is unknown so we'll keep it as m2 m1 which is half and 1 plus m1 which is half 
into m2 which is unknown again. So from this equation we get 2m2 minus 1 divided by 2 whole divided by 1 plus sorry 2 plus m2 upon 2 modulus of whole of this. What we get is 1 is equal to modulus of 2m2 minus 1 upon 2 plus m2. Now what we should always remember, some of you might be knowing this, is that modulus of x if is given to be 1 or any other value, then if we have to represent x, it's given by x is equal to plus minus 1. That is value of x is either plus 1 or minus 1. So if you have to open this expression, we get two cases. One is 2m2 minus 1 upon 2 plus m2 is equal to 1 and the other is 2m2 minus 1 upon 1 sorry 2 plus m2 is equal to minus 1. Solving this we get 2m2 minus 1 is equal to 2 plus m2. So m2 is equal to 3 and solving this we get 2m2 minus 1 is equal to minus 2 minus m2. So solving it we get 3m2 is equal to minus 1. m2 is equal to minus 1 by 3. So now what we see the two answers we get are m2 is equal to 3 and m2 is equal to minus 1 by 3. Both these m2s are correct and satisfy the given equation because none of them will make the denominator that is 2 plus m2 0. So both of them are valid and hence the answer is m is equal to 3 or minus 1 by 3. So this was our today's lesson. See you soon.